Merry Christmas. I want to welcome you to a special Christmas Eve worship service with Edgewood United Church. Whether you are joining us from East Lansing, Lansing, Okemos, Holt, Montana, Pittsburgh, Texas, Washington, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Many of us are missing being in the sanctuary of Edgewood for tonight's service of seeing one another in person. I am missing you as well. If you are longing for the chance to say, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Whether you are an active member or perhaps you grew up in this place and would come home for the holidays, I want to invite you to join us on an open Zoom call after worship where you can come give your season's greetings, catch up, listen to stories for as long or as short as you like, ending the evening as we so often do with a time of fellowship and connection. If you don't have that Zoom information, you can send us a Facebook message or send me an email and we will send that out to you. It is also in the e-notes from the past few weeks. So let us prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into the sacred story, as we enter into a worship service filled with song and prayer and scripture, as we remind each other once again that God's love shines brightly in the world. This year we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe, for to dream is to hope, to dream is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it is almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship Holy God. In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. 
Then several years later, Jesus walked this earth, and dreams came true. The sick were healed, the poor had food, the forgotten and, and ignored were seen, the children were welcomed, everyone was invited to the table, the, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, and love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be reminded, be a reminder that there will be, there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship Holy God. Holy God, we come to you tonight with dreams tucked into our pockets, admitting that at times it feels risky to dream. At times it feels risky to ask for too much, to believe in that which we cannot see. 
So instead, we make wishes on stars and search for luck in clover fields. Instead of sinking into you, we try to control the narrative. However, somewhere rumbling deep in our heart, there is a dream of a better world, trapped like a caged bird. Open our eyes to you in our midst. Give us the confidence of Mary to sing into the mystery. Dust your dream for us off the shelves of our hearts until once more we are those who dream. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a woman who was engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The woman's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was perplexed by his words and pondered just what kind of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, But how can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived of a son. This is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that more 
thorns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O King of nations, bind in one the hearts of you, mankind. Bid all our sad divisions cease and be yourself our King of Peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her for about three months and then returned to her home. Mary, did you know that your baby
Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, a young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All, all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. What child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping, whom angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch are keeping? This, this the angels sing is Christ, God's holy offering. Haste, haste your praise to bring the babe, the child of Mary. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, 
the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing the joyous strains. Gloria in excels this day. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them, where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild Good and sinners reconciled Joyful all ye nations rise Join the triumph of the skies With angelic hosts proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Christ by highest heaven adored Christ the everlasting Lord Laid in time behold him come Offspring of a virgin's womb Veiled in flesh the Godhead see Hail the incarnate deity Pleased as man with man to dwell Jesus our Emmanuel Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace Hail the Son of Righteousness Light and life to all he brings Risen with healing in his wings Mild he lays his glory by Born that man no more may die Born to raise the sons of earth Born to give them second birth Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Every year on Christmas Eve, we collect a special offering. It is different from any other offering we collect during worship throughout the year. It goes to two special funds. The first is the Pastor's Discretionary Fund. That is a resource that when folks call the church looking for assistance, whether it is for an overdue bill or help with a food or gas card, or a, a school, a local school, asking for support for some of their families in need this holiday season, a call I fielded just this week. The Pastor's Discretionary Fund allows me to say yes to those requests, to give out gifts generously, to help folks without access to other resources, to be a bridge in between gaps in income and payments. That fund is filled on Christmas Eve night 
and sustains us the whole next year. So it is an important gift, an important offering that we receive. The other portion of our offering goes to the United Church of Christ Christmas Fund. This is a special fund that is received by retired United Church of Christ clergy, often ones who dedicated their years of service to serving small congregations, congregations with shoestring budgets. This is a fund that, similar to our local discretionary fund, offers gifts to help bridge the gap between pension payments and bills that are due, that offers assistance when it is asked for, that provides a buffer for retired folks who are living on an extremely limited income. It is a fund that is grounded in generosity and gratitude and giving back to those who have spent their careers serving the church. I love that on this night, 100% of our offerings go to these two funds. So I invite you to give with me. You can do so by putting a check in the church that says Christmas Eve offering in the memo line and mailing it into the church, or by giving online and in our PayPal donations in the memo line saying Christmas Eve offering. We will make sure your gifts go to those two funds, that we are able to say yes to requests for another year, knowing also that our congregation is making a small impact for retired clergy across the country, connecting us to a web of service and churches far beyond our imagination. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for joining me in our service and commitment to those whose needs are often unseen. Holy God, we come to you tonight with dreams tucked into our pockets, admitting that at times it feels too risky to dream. At times, it feels risky to ask for too much, to believe in that which we cannot see. So instead, we make wishes on stars and search for luck in clover fields. Instead of sinking into you, we try to control the narrative. However, somewhere, Rumbling deep in our heart, there is a dream of a better world, trapped like a caged bird. Open our eyes to you in our midst. Give us the confidence of Mary to sing into the mystery. Dust your dream for us off the shelves of our hearts until once more we are those who dream. Amen. There are years when Bethlehem feels far away. There are years when that first Christmas night feels like it is from a time long, long ago cut off from our reality, or our experience of life. But then there are years like this one, when everything has been turned upside down, when we have had a year that no one could have predicted, that make me say, yeah, that story is very close. Close in my heart, close to our collective experience. This is a story of two young people who are faced with a situation of despair and uncertainty, who found their way through it, who took a journey that they didn't know what the result would be, but they led with trust and hope that they would find what they needed. 
This is a story of shepherds caring for their flocks who were asked to answer a bigger call to care for their neighbor, to set aside life as they knew it, what must have been comfortable in its routines, to show up on a neighbor's doorstep to take a journey, not knowing what they would find, not knowing what would be asked of them. This is a story of love, of God's love, manifesting in a world, in a place where there should have only been despair, of a story that should have been forgotten as soon as it happened, but instead spread from community to community across the whole globe and kept being told over and over. This is a story for anyone who has struggled this year with fear, with loss, with uncertainty, who has wondered who they can trust, what they can trust, who has had their daily routines turned upside down, who's had something new asked of them in order to care for their neighbors. This is for anyone who has taken a journey this year, not certain where it would go, how it would end. This is a story for all of us who are far from home tonight, whether that is from far from a home filled with family and love, far from the home of other people where you would rather be, or far from our church home, the physical manifestation of our sanctuary tonight. This is a story for anyone who feels displaced this Christmas. God's love cannot be taken away by a virus or by dictators or by injustice. It continues to manifest and shine bright in our world. Tonight, we tell the story and we remind each other of God's love far away in Bethlehem and right here in our homes. This is a night when each of us is invited to light a candle as a reminder that Christ's light continues to shine in the world and through each of us. May Christ's light of love and peace shine bright this Christmas Eve.